Well, we're here with Coach Shoup, head coach of FAMU Baseball. Thanks so much for making some time for us. I know you're busy getting ready for the season, but like you said, before we knew it, baseball season is here. How are preparations going for opening day Friday for you guys? Yeah, unbelievable that's just around the corner. Uh, today's our last scrimmage, um, so we get the last, our two and three starters will throw today about five, six innings. Um, you know, I feel like we're ready. It's, SWAC's going to be so much different this year. It's better competition. Uh, and we hit SWAC competition right off the get-go. Uh, we play in the Andre Dawson Classic, a great way for FAMU baseball to start their season, uh, named after a former FAMU Rattler and Hall of Famer, Chicago, Cub, Chicago Cubs, uh, Andre Dawson. So uh, excited about that. We open up with, I think, the team that won it last year from the Western Division, not the division we're in, but the other division. And then we play Alabama State, who was second in the division we're in, the Eastern Division. And then our third game is going to be against the team that came in second um, in the Eastern Division. And then after that, we come back home, go play Mercer on Tuesday, Wednesday up there, then go to Atlanta and play in the Ralph Gar, uh, Bill Lucas in Invitational there, play Grambling, who finished third in the Western Division. So our schedule. You know, it's really hot when it comes to uh, SWAC baseball right off the gate. Right, quite a welcome into the conference, yeah. right? I wanted to ask you, you know, first season of SWAC, you mentioned it. What's that transition been like? What are the benefits you see of the SWAC? And again, that competition being a higher level maybe presents a challenge there. Yeah, I mean, the commissioner of the SWAC is kind of called the SWAC conference, a baseball conference. Uh, it's amazing how much attention he gives to the sport, which obviously makes the, the sport more relative when it comes to SWAC, you know, the whole conference. Uh, he's on every conference call that we have with the coaches, uh, just a, a very hands-on commissioner. And uh, as I said, he stated that he wants the SWAC to be a baseball conference. And there's some very, very good teams, as you know, in SWAC baseball. Um, we're familiar with the league. We played Alabama State almost every year, probably every year. Jose Vasquez, a coach there, is a good friend of mine. Uh, we played Jackson State several times. We played Grambling three times last year. So we know what to expect. With that being said, we also know that SWAC is better than the MEAC top to bottom. So it's a, it's a challenge for us and one that we, we understand going in. Uh, we got to recruit better. We got to practice better. We got to play better. And, uh, but we're excited about it. You know, the, the, the whole key is we get to play come Friday, you know, Friday night in New Orleans. A great place to open up again. Andre Dawson, named after him, the invitational the tournament there is. So we're excited. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about the Andre Dawson Classic. National exposure there for FAMU in the new conference. You know, iron sharpens iron, like you were saying, with great competition to start, conference competition to start. What's that mean to participate in uh, yeah. former FAMU uh, players? tournament there. You know, the, one of the first things I did when I got the job back in 2013 was uh, get the opportunity to meet with Andre. He came in, hadn't been back in a while, and for a football weekend, and uh, got to spend a little time with him. And it's, uh, it's amazing. The more of these big leaguers, Hall of Famers that you know, sometimes people think that they may be distant, but he's just this nice, cordial, you know, uh, comfortable guy to be around as there is. And he'll be there. He won't say a whole lot. He's a very quiet guy, but he'll be there watching and, and hopefully pull him for the Rattlers. Uh, we play Alabama State on Saturday. That will be a national televised game by Major League Baseball, MLB Network. Um, and what our guys are looking, you know, guys are, they're, they're young. They're, 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 they're fun to be around. And uh, they came to me and, and uh, asked Coach Henry to approach me about an all-black uni. So we will break out the all-black uni for the Saturday Major League Baseball network televised game and it's something the players like um, um, so we're excited about we will be the visiting team so we'll be able to to break those out on Saturday night on national television and they are good looking uniforms maybe not quite my style you know maybe not quite 1970 style like I prefer but uh, they're, they're nice looking uniforms. Right. Well how about that you heard it here first breaking out the yeah, new uniforms. I hope we can play as well as we look because I think we'll look good. <laughs> look good play good that's what it's all about right. All right so focusing on this team specifically you know in the off season and here as we approach the season when you look at this team 2022 version what is it you're like okay that's a strength that's something we can hang our hat on going forward this year and then something you maybe look at and say okay we're going to have to kind of improve on that if we want to get where we want to go yeah everybody will tell you that knows much about baseball will tell you that if uh if you feel good about your pitching then you feel good about your team uh, we felt really good about our pitching in the fall and then we had a tragic occurrence that that happened uh during the christmas break we lost a guy that would have been in a rotation dalton harrell to a tragic uh, shooting accident and it was definitely an accident uh, he was a guy that could really help us not to mention that he was a leader uh, he just made everybody feel comfortable uh, he 
you know, first year in our program, but he, uh, he just endeared himself to everybody while he was here. So it's kind of bittersweet to talk about that, uh, uh, but I know if Dalton were here, he'd want us to play a certain way and to continue on with his thought in mind, with his memory in mind. But uh, so we got a little incentive there to play our best for him. Uh, but with that being said, if you like your pitching, you like your team, and that certainly put a that put a threw a wrench in our plans pitching wise. But you know, I like what we see so far. We got Keelan Fox back. He'll start the first game. Probably won't be our Friday night starter, but he'll start the first game in New Orleans just because we feel like he's earned that. Uh, and the reason I say he won't start Friday nights is because he's left-hander. So we'll sandwich him when we get going in conference play with two right-handers, a Friday night right-hander, him on, you know, left-hander on Saturday night, and then a, a right-hander on Sunday. Um, who those will be, we feel, feel confident, don't know quite the order, that two transfers, two guys we got out of the transfer portal will actually start. We've got uh, DJ Wilkinson, uh, who played at Pensacola Junior College from Osceola, a uh, relatively local guy and uh, went to Troy and then transferred through the transfer portal here. You know, he'll start either the Friday or Saturday night. He'll start the Saturday night game uh, in the first weekend in, in New Orleans. And then um, um, we've got a, another right-handed pitcher that, that transferred from uh, Montgomery Auburn. Uh, yeah, uh, that's from Pensacola, Florida, and I'm drawing a blank on his name right now for some reason. Uh, Hunter Veets, Hunter Veets, and uh, sorry, Hunter, but uh, uh, Hunter Veets will will start the Sunday game, and uh, both of them are, you know, lower 90s. Uh, Wilkinson's even topped out above 95 up to 97 before Veets has been up to 94 before. Both of them are very, very capable uh, pitchers. So, uh, you know, with that being said, we got Jeremiah McCollum, one of our leaders, back in the bullpen. Uh, ben Kreisen, and then the guy that led us in appearance last year, Zach Moore, a local kid from Childs High School. So feel pretty good about our pitching. There'll be some other guys and new names you'll see, maybe some new local kids. Uh, the kid from North Florida Christian, Dallas Tees, has thrown well so far this preseason. Uh, but, you know, I like our arms. I wish we had one more, and we'll certainly live this, you know, play the season with him in mind. Uh, ironically, Griffin Long, who's on the dis disabled list right now, is from the same place that Dalton is from. And they both went to junior college together, and they're best friends, grew up together. And uh, uh, Griffin will wear his number 17, Dalton's number 17, during the course of the season. So Griffin's on the DL right now, but a, a pretty good right-handed bat for us that we look to be able to contribute a lot once he gets healthy. And I wanted to ask about another local kid, McClay kid, freshman, Brody Popple. Tell me about his uh, progression. Yeah, Brody is, uh, he's our catcher of the future without question. He's very, very athletic, switch hitter as well. Um, Hit a home run in our scrimmage yesterday, which was really our big scrimmage. That nine inning Saturday before we open up scrimmage has always been our our biggest scrimmage of the year. And uh, hit one right-handed, and it seem, you know seems like he's a better hitter left-handed, but then he comes out and uh, hits the home run yesterday right-handed. Uh, he he's got a chance to be a really really good player for us. How much he plays and how quick he becomes uh, relevant to us winning will be how well he receives. I mean, he throws the ball extremely well. Is as athletic of a catcher as we've ever had back there. I think there's some offensive potential there, um, but he's got you know we we've got to we've got to get him innings and get him ready because he's a he's definitely our, one of our catchers of the future without question. Um, Offensively, while we're talking about Brody and uh, other things, I mean, we got uh, the team guy that led us in hit, L.J. Bryant led us in hitting last year. He returns uh, for his last year. He'll play right field. We got Jared Weber, who two years ago led us, gosh, I think he hit it a 380 clip in MEAC play. Um, he led us in hitting that year. He's moved in from the outfield to, uh, to play third base. So we got those two returning players that are really going to help us. Uh, offensively and, and defensively. I think Jared's going to really be able to play third base uh, to our liking. And then we got a couple of transfers too. We got one in particular. We got, uh, we got Ty Hanchi who will uh, move into the outfield, play some outfield. Left-handed hitter from Norfolk State, the team that, that won the MEAC last year. So very good offensive guy and he's, you know, he's, uh, he swings the bat very well from the left side. So, and then we got some returners, you know, back. We, uh, we got um, we actually got a, a transfer in too that we'll do a lot of time, spend a lot of time catching, and another uh, another uh, local guy, TD uh, Tyler Dunbar, uh, has transferred in from Swanee College, a local child's product. So he's got two years of eligibility, and he's got a chance to be. You know, he'll be. We'll probably split time with two guys 
him and uh, Evan Badger, a junior college guy behind the plate, but uh, he'll, he'll spend a lot of time behind the plate as well. Yeah, okay, so you've mentioned quite a few transfers, and I'm happy you brought that up yeah. because we've seen the transfer portal kind of take the shape across other sports. I know us at WCTV have been talking. It's not that new to baseball, but how have you seen that benefit your program? Well, as it looks like right now, if I, if I had to, to, to say who our, what our rotation would be uh, and what I already know, you know, barring injury, what our rotation will be the first weekend, uh, two of the three starters on the weekend rotation will be, uh, will be our, our starting rotation, will be guys that came in through the transfer portal, as will our number two guy in the lineup, Hanchi, that I mentioned, will be, you know, came through the transfer portal, as will one of our two starting catchers. Uh, you know, we're still waiting to see if anybody di out distance the other one. Both of them are very, very good, uh, TD. Uh, Tyler Dunbar. So, it, I mean, we got two guys in our rotation right now, and we've got two guys on the field right now that came through the transfer portal. So, uh, you know, we're excited about that. I tell you, another guy offensively to look out for is our center fielder, who I feel like we finally, something we struggled with offensively, in my opinion, the last couple of years, we've never had a true leadoff guy. But uh, we got a name, Zed Burnham. Uh, he played at Seminole for Rick Hitt down there, Seminole Community College. I'm sorry, South Florida Community College for Rick Hitt. And uh, he'll lead all for us. And I mean, I can just, he's one of those guys that's, you just put his name at the top of the lineup and you just leave him alone for the whole season. So barring injury, you'll see him lead all for the mo you know, most part of the season for us. Wanted to talk about the upgrades coming to the field as well. Yeah. Where, where are we in that process? And that's are you a good excited question. for that? <laughs> yeah, I would be excited. Uh, you know, if it kind of fell through, we're supposed to have that uh, done after, after a fall season. And we'd hope to have that for this season, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. So we're still hoping that it's going to happen. There are some upgrades. We've got a new netting system behind home plate. Um, there's some other things. We're having to redo the infield. We were trying to hold off on that, uh, hoping that we would get artificial turf, astroturf down. Um, so we'll wait and see. Hopefully this summer they'll, you know, they were just going to do the infield portion of it. And then this summer come back to the outfield. So hopefully this summer we'll see them come in and, uh, and do the whole field. And if we do that, then that's going to really be an upgrade for us. Uh, in terms of recruiting and, uh, you know, give us something to showcase, bring some more kids in here to play on our field in front of our coaching staff to kind of get that FAMU feel. And, um, you know, that'll help us recruiting as well. And last thing I wanted to ask you, Coach, just how excited are you for a season that is finally kind of similar to 2019? Before all this happened, some normalcy. How excited are you for baseball to be yeah, here? Yeah, the expectations going into the season are that we are going to play a whole season. Things, you know, restrictions are – are, are lessening now across the country. So, you know, I mean, 2020, people don't know what these young men went through uh, to, to get on the bus and go somewhere and stop to get something to eat and no restaurants open and, and just the uncertainty of whether they're gonna finish the season and all and teams that had opted out, Bethune Cookman, who joins us in the SWAC, opted out for the 2021 season. So, uh, you know, we finally, I think we have a pretty good idea that we're gonna play baseball and uh, we're certainly excited about that. Awesome. Well, Coach Schubert, FAMU Baseball, thanks so much for joining You're us. You're welcome. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you, man.